A ship runs aground and within 48 hours, the captain is convicted as a criminal for passing too close to the islands. The captain, on the other hand, struggles to understand what was so special about this maneuver. It's a normal practice. How we frame surprises, novel situations and incidents becomes the basis for where we look for solutions and fixes. Our typical reaction when handling and learning from surprises and incidents is to reduce injuries and increase surveillance. An answer is often found in simplifying the processes, designing fail-safe systems, a search for non-conformities, retraining people and setting up court rooms to provide justice in the workplace. In an attempt to prevent the next accident, the entire language of the organization is turned into a quest for certainty, order and often dehumanizing the fallible humans. Of course, dehumanization is not always overt. It comes in different shades from polite reminders, top-down safety alerts, retraining and all the way to increased surveillance and sanctions. It slowly makes the entire workplace toxic. People go silent and secretive within their own silos and groups. The management conducts engagement surveys and craves for speak-up initiatives, resilience, well-being and soft skills to change hearts and minds. We call it culture change. When a problem is presented as a mechanical, rational, brain-centric disorder and a solution is to be found in measurements and dashboards, it has little to do with culture. Culture is not a system. Culture is culture. In this workshop, we will experience a more holistic approach to learning and culture. Away from the Cartesian brain-centered view of human mind, we will be introduced to the concept of embodied mind rooted in both conventional wisdom as well as the most advanced research in neurosciences, studies in consciousness and across disciplines. The mind extends far beyond the brain. The entire human body is a mind. And unlike brain-centered approaches that tend to think that human beings are conscious of their decisions, we will learn why, through the course of evolution, humans have always been largely unconscious and therefore unaware of their decisions and their underlying beliefs, myths and rituals. Understanding the embodied nature of human mind has wide implications for how people learn and unlearn and how we can influence the culture of our workplaces in an ethical and sensible manner. Culture is a wicked problem. There are no easy fixes or simple solutions. Anyone who has raised children, read a book on suicides, flown a plane or navigated a ship would know that too well. Much of culture is lived in emotions and feelings within our bodies. It is not in the knowing. It's not in the brain. Drawing from a vast range of disciplines and by using proven methods in social psychology of risk that we call culture cloud, you will learn how to observe, feel and experience habits and rituals, behaviors and particularly behaviors under stress, the fundamental assumptions about what people consider right and wrong outside our own culture, history beyond recorded events and facts, how to frame questions, observe silences and think metaphorically, the hidden meaning in artifacts displayed on our walls and how to understand slogans and symbols. Away from brain-centric training and lecturing, you will learn how to feel and experience culture through a vast range of kinesthetic exercises, somatic methods, music, drama, fun, role play, storytelling, artwork, and a semiotic walk to a church or a museum. You will learn the science behind how human beings learn, unlearn and relearn, a framework for surfacing and listening to beliefs, worldviews, myths, rituals, symbols, and more. How to map conversation in an ethical framework so that you can listen and map decision-making and collective sense-making. Experiential walk to realize our biases and the limits of our own observations. Implicit, tacit knowing and how myths and beliefs work in practice. Culture audit and various other tools for practically assessing your culture. And a pocket guide that you can readily refer to when you are in the middle of an audit, investigation or a site visit. Remember, this is a journey and we will never leave you alone. Each month, we bring members from around the world together in practice sessions so that we can all learn from and with each other. I hope you will join us in this journey. Thank you for listening.